Y'all are in bigger trouble than usual. I got green tea, so it's not possible for my voice to go away. Which it's trying to. But today we're going to tie the Zoo Cougar. Uh, this is going to be the, it's kind of appropriate because we're in the new studio. We haven't quite got everything done yet. But we're going to tie the original kind of fly that got me rolling, the Zoo Cougar. If I can get this marabou out of my face. Um, <clears throat> the Zoo Cougar is kind of the fly that started out the whole thing for me. Uh, in the streamer world, we started, man, I don't even know, 25 years ago or something. This is kind of the first one. And quite frankly, I don't think I've tied a better fly since. This fly has just been so productive. It's good. It's an incredible smallmouth, largemouth fly. Great. I mean, I've, one of my best customers ever is a striper guy with this fly it's, and of course it's just it's just been a money uh, brown trout and rainbow fly so uh, I'm going to go through what we're going to use obviously um, start with the hooks it's a 710 number two is uh, and if you're going to tie these that's just the hook I use um, I like a 3x long hook and you know all my videos I say the same thing um, whenever I use a 3X, if you're used to using 4, just go one size bigger. So if you use a number 4, 4X, go to a size 2, 3X, and you'll gain that eye. And all I'm looking for is a little bit more gap in that hook. It's a little stouter hook, too. So the tail, just standard yellow uh, marabou. Going to have a body. And by the way, you, you can change this body if you want to. A lot of times I dub them. I love dub bodies. But the original one is a sparkle braid. Um, <clears throat> next thing you're going to need is calf tail, just white calf tail. And I pretty much use white even, I use it on everything. I use it on, even on my black ones, I put the white tail underneath there. So it's, you're going to have a lot of use for that. Um, next thing you're going to need are, and I'm going to, I'm going to go over this a lot because there's a lot, I get a lot of questions about this mallard flank. Uh, we're going to have, I've got the golden, the wood duck. Uh, golden mallard flank and I'm going to go over something about this in a sec well when we get to it but how you select it and rather you can use other feathers and uh, if you should use one or another we'll go over that a lot and last but not least uh, my favorite thing is deer hair we're going to have that in there <clears throat> so to get started what I do hooks. so the zoo cougar was designed to fish on a was designed to fish on a sinking line and it was designed to be a sculpin imitation. Oh, and the other thing that's going to be a first for this one is I don't have my right glasses, so I'm going to have not have my click readers on. Me, the first one ever, I think, but couldn't find, a, I took them off in here somewhere. I don't know where they are. So, oh, I forgot to say the last thing. As with almost every one I do, I'm going to use the uh, GSP 100. So, but this, like I was saying earlier, this fly was designed to fish on a sinking line. It's designed to be a sculpin pattern. And it's really, sculpin, as you all know, do not have the ability to come up and down in the water columns. They don't have an advanced swim bladder. So they don't, they can't go up and down like this. And so if they get up off the bottom, they're frequently kind of having trouble to get down to the bottom. They don't like to, they're, they're rock dwellers, man. They stay down there. And so this fly was designed to flutter. If, if a sculpin gets up, 10 inches out if there's any current which that they like current they kind of get kicked around and this fly was designed to do that and so there's a lot of things built into it from the flank to the the shape of the head and a you know a, a sculpin has really wide i'll find a picture and we'll put it in there so you can see but they have really wide pectoral fins so you got wide pectorals you got this flank feather it's got a nice flat bottom and it's designed to catch water and flutter a little bit and it has no weight. They're not. They're never weighted. So, with any of these flies, if you're if you're just start, starting to tie them, uh, tie in. Get another. Get one that you can use a sample, so you don't have a giant head or really short head. Just get one that you know tells you basically where you're going to start the head right in here. It's about the quarter point, you know. And so we're going to start our thread. And what and you've seen me do this. And for those of you who watch the videos, it's. You've seen me do this on any fly I do. I always start the head of the fly, the thread, excuse me, where I want the head to begin. So if it was a thread wrap head, I would maybe it'd be way up here, but I, it's just a stop point. It, right there, nothing gets to go past that. 
And so, <clears throat> I screwed that up, didn't I? Nothing gets to go past that. Just hold your thread back. And, and so when we go forward, there, there won't be anything in this bare hook part from now on. We're going to have it right there. So, steal this marabou. And with all my, with like every fly I tie, I'm going to select, I'm going to sort this. We're going to have some, you're always going to have drop. You're always going to have Drop's a woodworking term. We're always going to have some culls. We're going to have a feather that's good and a feather that's not. This feather is not good. The tip's missing off of this feather, so that's just a cull. And then we're just, and I, and I tell you all the time, I figure that you end up with about, now when we turn into cokeheads because we think we got marabou up our nose instantly. When you get, um, when you've got this stuff, you end up with, pro on a really great bag of this stuff, you probably cull 20% of it. But normally on almost every natural product, you end up with about a third of it's gonna go away. So I stack all my tails. When I, when I say I stack them, I get this crap off the bottom, pull this up so I can see that they're all the same length. When I go, when I pull all those up, is that too high, too low? Right there, perfect. Right there. Um, I want all these fibers to be the same length. And that's why I take all this bottom stuff off. I don't want excess. I, I'm going to use two feathers, so be, make sure you have perfect feather with this. Don't put that in your mouth. It's bad for you. All right. Always err on the length, of, on the long end. But on this one, what I like, this tail, where this thread, and I didn't mention that, you should always, when you drop your thread, you should always be at the gouge. And I, and I say this in every video. It's redundant, but just it, it's really important. And so that tells us we never we never go back this far or way forward or everything's consistent. And then when we measure from the eye of the hook, on this one, I like it to be the eye to where that thread is right there. I don't want it back further. I like it that long right there. That's up to you. It's just, it has a little bit to do with, uh, that's the flutter, right? You're looking for the flutter. But it also has to do with finding a, a mallard flank that's going to fit well. And if you go too long, your tail tends to stick out a little bit longer. So that's just for me, for my gauge right there. Now we're just going to transfer to a pinch wrap. <clears throat> do That's your pinch wrap. It goes straight down. I'm going to go from right to left, left to right. I just did a figure eight. Now I'm going to hold this feather towards me. You can see I'm just doing nice even wraps. I'm going to get right there. And I am going to work back to where I began. And we're gonna, and what I'm doing is I'm starting a taper. I'm building a little bit of a taper with the materials under here. And when you do that, I want you to understand something that every wrap has a purpose. You don't get to just, sometimes they're tight, sometimes they're loose, and oh, you know, whatever, you do this. You get, every single wrap has the same tension. When you see me going forward and backwards, I don't make one tighter than the other. They're all exactly the same. And what that does, it gives you structural integrity to your fly. Just get used to working that bobbin so every, no matter what you're doing, it's the same tension. And that way, everything's nice and clean. Now, as you can see, I've got it built on one side. And these are just subtle things. These are not, I'm not trying to big, build a really big jump here. By the time I put this one in, I'm going to just to just a slight taper and it's, it's really on the nuances of these things when you see the the superstar tires out there they don't they don't make they, they don't make giant jumps they make little jumps so everything's smooth they get a lot of integrity their fly it's nice and tight and we're going to do the same thing as we did with the first one right there but this one i don't have to measure because i know right there's my fly right there's my so we're going to do it right over top of it this is a stack tail two, three. Now on this one, I'm going to be on the back side. And I have to tell you, I am playing blind right now. These glasses do not work like my other ones. Which means, next time you see me, I'm going to have my regular ones on. Because I can't see anything with these. So, there we go. Now we're going to take our crystal, our sparkle braid, this stuff here, I already pulled a piece out of that, so I didn't have to open that. While I'm still up there, I'm going to tie this in. 
I'm gonna leave a little bit just right here. Notice I haven't went past the thread. And now I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna hold it tight, I'm gonna come down the back side, and I'm just keeping a little pressure on it. And my vice set right. I'm gonna hold that so it's on the back side. I'm building more taper. And all I'm doing is just night. Now I know that body is just super tight. I didn't waste any time going forward and back. Mr. Powell. Bingo. So now we've got their bodies tied in. Nice, nice and secure. It's not going to, when I start my rotation, it's not going to try to spin. You can see these bodies are really tight. And that's really what fly tying is. It's about getting this structural integrity to these to the flies. So when you start moving stuff around, start wrapping stuff, it doesn't twist like that. Because when that thing gets wet and it all starts to expand, if you get out in the water, your fly is going to get just loose as it, as it can be and it's going to fall apart. So we're going to take our first wrap, always on this first one, I do one complete wrap, and then I, you can see I always grab the tail. So you grab your tail, make sure everything's tight, and then just give it a stretch, man. Really give it, make it nice and tight right there. One, two, three, four. Just a little tug right there. Just we're just tightening it down every so often. Nice and tight. So let me get right here to the body. Now watch on this close-up. I stretch that thing. Now I've got it really super tight. Just all you're trying to do is make a fly that does not come undone when the first tooth from a 25-inch brown, which nobody ever's caught a fish smaller than 25 on a zoo cougar in history. So when you get that first 25 inch brown, you don't blow the fly up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie in this calf tail. Um, we've already got some out here. And I wanna go through this a little bit because this is something you can see screw up a lot. Um, you see people tie in this, get that out of the way. You can see on the end of this, there's a calf tail has a twirl to it and you gotta, it's hard to find the ones that are just straight, right? But you've got to do it. If you, you don't want to tie this stuff in if it's got this cow lick in it. It's probably where that term come from, don't you think? Too low? Too high? There you go. So let me just pop this thing off of here and show you. This stuff is twisted. And if it's, when it's twisted like that, you're just going to fight it the whole time. I mean, it's a pain in the butt. So just look through your calf tails. Generally, that's only on the end. But you just, just be careful that you don't have any, too much twist in it. Because it, it'll, it'll tend to make your fly twist a little bit in the water too. Look for one that's got nice straight. This, and this, this part of the fly, it, it has a function, but it's not, it's not as big a function as the flank we're going to put on. But what this does is it kind of stabilizes the feather on top of the hook. Keeps it from rolling side to side. And I don't really know if I did that in the, when I first did it. I must have had a reason to put it under there. And I must have had feathers that weren't staying on top. Uh, I really can't remember. You gotta find somebody that was there that was young enough that remembers. But I wanna show you one more thing right there, and I almost cut it off without. When you look at this hair, it's shorter right here than it is here. And it's only because it's growing up at an angle. If you take the, the hair and take it to a 90 to the side, you can see that, is that right? Okay, right to the side. Now you can see how the ends of it's all the same length. That's what you're looking for. So take your hair, Get it off to the side of the, bonk, cut it off. Now, we're going to, like with all hair, I, I just cut it off, it's just in my right hand, and you can see, is that just is that right there? You can see right here, my first call on this, you've got to clean this hair up. So when I pull, I grab the tips of that, and when I, let, when I pull, that's how much crap's gotta come out of this fly. That's just the beginning, right? So you give it two of that, you don't really necessarily have to comb this as much as you would on deer hair because it's all the same hair and, and it's just you're just getting the shorter directional hairs out. So now when I when I grab that by the tips, I do it once and you can see I only got a couple on there. Now we've got a nice little wing that should go back just into the just into the tail. I don't want it the same length, I want it just into the tail, maybe just past the bend or the right there in the bend of the hook. And now I want to show you something else that <clears throat> Uh, I, the way I was taught, the way everything I've ever seen, how you put in calf tail. And by the way, calf tail, squirrel tail, 
bucktail if you get up into it a little bit longer. Uh, just about anything that's a tail, a real tail, is not hollow. It's non-compressible. So the tie-in non-compressible hair, uh, different than you do hollow hair because it won't give and flex for you, right? And so you tie this in and everything I was taught my whole life is you come in here and you tie it in and you cut it at an angle, at a 45 degree angle like this. I personally believe that's 100% wrong. And what happens if you do that, because these are solid, it's just like a bundle of sticks. If one stick falls out of this thing, and I don't care how much glue you put on it, it's just gonna fall out. You have to do it right. And so if you take this thing, and instead of cutting it at a 45 degree angle like that, you do just the opposite. You come in and you cut it, so now, the shortest hairs, is that, can you see that on the mm -hmm. close-up? The shortest hairs are on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a ton of compression on that at the bottom, as opposed to having one turn of thread up here if I do it the other direction, and there's not much compression there. If one hair falls out, the whole damn thing does, because it's just, they're all solid. So now, watch when I tie this in, how much compression I'm gonna get on this, and how little buildup I'm gonna get in front of it. So I put my first one, let me get my finger out of there. And I pull down and you can see, I'm getting all that compression nice and tight and I go forward and I get virtually no build and I take it right up into the, I don't worry about coming into the eye of the hook. All right, so now this thing's not moving. I can pull on it all day. See, I'm not losing any hair. I can pull on the thing, right? And, it, and if you do it the other direction, if you put it that way, and it slides, especially with GSP, because it's so slippery, right? It just slides up. If you lose just a couple of those hairs, the whole thing's gonna undo. And you've heard me say many times in here, I, I don't think you should use glue. Glue, if I put glue on here, it's not gonna make it stronger, and it's not gonna make it not fall out. It's just gonna, I'm gonna have a shallow little, or a little shiny little head there, won't have any hair on it. So, now to probably the most Frustrating part of tying a zoo cougar is the next step. It's not frustrating, what's frustra tying it in, what's frustrating is getting the right feather. And so I'm gonna show you a couple things about the feathers and maybe there's a, somebody out there that owns a duck camp in like Alabama or something that loves these videos and would just love to tell me where they, about the thousands of mallards they shoot every year and they want to give me. Uh, because this is one of the hardest things of the whole thing. And I'm going to go through, and everybody talks about wood duck, so let me just, let me go through the mallard, and then I'll go into the wood duck, and I'll show you why it's not, not better, and the, all, teal's another substitute, and it's still not as good as the mallard, it's just, and, and it's about where we get the feathers. We sort these feathers, you know, if you've ever been on slidein.com and our website, you'll see we have zoo cougar packs. These things are a complete pain in the hiney to make, because we put, what do we, 36, how many 36. 36 feathers in here and we hand select them and so we go through the bags and we just sit and sort them and sort them because what we're trying to find are good feathers and here's here's a fe here's a, a fly that's been tied and it's not a great feather because what you can see is it's it's longer here and it's tied in and it's shorter over here or it's longer here excuse me shorter it's giving you a curve and that's not what you're looking for what you're looking for in the feather and I already pulled these out of the bag. What you're looking for is a straight shaft and the same distance on the, on the feathers on each side, on the barbulars on each side, so there's not a really long one on one side and a really short one on the other. That's a good one, this is a bad one. And it has two things that are wrong with it. First of all, this is really long over here and you can see they're longer on the right side of the feather and shorter on the left. So that's gonna track that feather this way. It's also got a touch of a twist. I don't mind if they flex, if they bend like this. I don't mind that. I don't care if it's going like that because we're gonna set it on top. What I don't want it to do is have a twist in the feather like that. So what we do is we go through and we just hand select these. So this would be a this would be a bad one. And you can work with some of those and you you know a little bit if that one's right on the edge where you could work with it. But everybody talks about wood duck. They want wood duck to come in. And I want you to see how, and I've got, I've got just tons of wood duck. And it's not, I love it for dry fly wings. It's just not that good for what we're doing. And first and foremost is because that one's kind of twisted. This one's kind of clean. 
but you see they're much lighter. They're, they're, they're just not as stiff as the ones that, and we need that. We need that built into the fly to keep it, you know, make it rigid on top so it just kind of doesn't flex all over. Because this is a really good one, right? And it's still relatively short when you put it up next to this. And you can see they're just, they're thinner on the edges. They're just not as thick. They're, these are longer uh, barbulars. These are thinner. They're pretty, but these dyed ones. And, and then I'm going to show you a comparison. This is a flank. This is a, a wood duck flank. And that's what we're looking for on these. This is a piece of a mallard flank. And this is where I need the duck hunters to get a hold of me. What this is, is it's not the chest. When you look at the, this is a flank feather on a wood duck. And these are too. But these are the ones with the bars in them. So it kind of renders them worthless for what we're doing. Not for everything, but for what we're doing. What this is, is it's right, this package of feathers right here. It's right at the end of where the wing lays down in the wing pocket. And if you notice, every single one of these is straight. They're just as perfectly straight. There's, a, there's probably 150 to 100 feathers on each side of the duck. You reach under there and you just pop them out. It's so fast, they come out as a package, one thing like this. I mean, that's, that's literally $50 worth of perfect feathers right there you know when you buy it but the problem is is when you buy a bag of these that's not what they do nobody goes in there and grabs them they go onto the plucking wheels and they just kind of they come out and there's just tons of them you just take all the feathers it goes into a bag then they get washed and dyed and sold to you and they just grab in and push them in a bag if you have an ability to find someone that hunt that that's right there that's one side not even all of it that's just a that's a there's a whole bunch more longer straighter ones on the bottom but they're not as what we use as much none of the breast feathers because the breast feathers are these little short ones like i showed you on the on the wood duck here and so you you need that nice straight long feather and so to find them it's not as easy as just buying a big bag and on this particular item when it comes to mallard flank if you're not gonna pay the money to have you know have them sorted you can figure i've seen as little as when we buy these bags those are those ounce. What are those bags? Quarter two ounce bags. One ounce. Yeah. We've had bags of those which are pretty big. Not like these the littler bags you see for three or four bucks. I think they're fifteen bucks a bag. I've pulled lots of bags out where I've not found one feather in the bag, which just of course we don't have any control over. No fly shop does. We all buy them from the suppliers, and so it really becomes critical that you sort through. Look at the bag. You know, on, on this particular product, if you're not buying the ones sorted, you can pretty much figure that you're going to lose, I would say a really good one would be 90% loss, and you're going to get 10% of the feathers. So it, it behooves you to really sort and look and, and select when it comes to this. Now, I want to show you just one or two things about once we start using them. Let's say that you've got one that's just, just slightly marginal. It's not exactly like that one I had there. Um, this one here. Say you had one that was just semi, man, it's, it's really close if, I, if it was the end of it's good and you know you don't want to sort through the bag. Maybe you end up with this, right? You can stack these. You put your kind of crappy one on the bottom and just make sure it's not twisted. As long as it's not twisted, you put this one here. Now these, fe the feathers I've got are good. I can get away with just one. But if you do that, put the short one on there and then cover it with the next one over the top of it and it'll give you a nice clean set and you'll have one you know, right over top of it and it, it'll end up looking all right. It, but don't put the bad one on top, especially if it's the long one because that's what the water's gonna track. So I'm gonna take these uh, and I, you know, on the bigger ones like this, I usually do put two feathers on it. And so I take the short one and we're cleaning all this crap out of here. And so the, all that, the aftershaft, the fuzzy stuff there. So we're going to set this thing right on top and we're going to make sure that it's it almost exactly that if you do anything I like just a little bit you know longer than the tail. And then if you notice on a mallard flank, this is what's really beautiful about the mallard, is that you'll see me in some of my old videos I'll do this. But now I'm long in the tooth and so my teeth probably don't bang like they want together. So if you've got a pair of pliers <coughs> flat pliers like these are. You can come in there or bite them, but you don't really have to do that. So you can see I made little dents in it, right? 
You don't have to do that with mallard because it's really quite flat. And you know what you're doing that for is you're trying to break if you've got a feather like off of a, a rooster neck. It's relatively round and you'll see people taking pliers, especially when you're trying to set it as a wing, and they'll, they're breaking the vein. They're just breaking it up so it's, you don't smash it completely. You break it up so that it'll lay flat against, you're, you're putting it on a round, you're putting it on a round surface, you're putting it on top of the hook. So now you're putting a round thing on top of another round thing and it's trying to fall off. So when you take, you know, it rolls around. It's like putting two pencils on top of it or two ink pens or whatever. They try to roll off each other. If you flatten them a little bit and let it contour around the hook, it stops rolling. I just had a, just this morning I had an email, from a guy called me or emailed me and said, you know, I keep trying to set these wings and they just keep rolling no matter how I put the tension on. And so that will stop some of that. And you can also take your, if you don't do this hard, but if you've got too much buildup, you can flatten that just a little bit if you're having problems. Make sure you don't have it really round on top. Okay, a lot of chitter chatter there. Make sure, I, I'm just gonna look and pick my feather, which one I like. I like them to be a little bit pointy. So I'm gonna take this one, it's gonna be the pointier one. That's gonna be my top feather, my decoration feather. The one that I can see. I was kidding, I can still bite a feather. Whew. Feeling good. All right, so right on top, we're gonna put one, two, three. Just, and before I tighten things up, I'm gonna look right over the top of it and you, you know, make sure it's where you want it. And then I'm going to just tighten up a little bit on that, come right back to where I started. I'm gonna take the second one and this one's just slightly longer. I'm going right over top. One, right to left, two, three, move forward. I don't really tighten everything down right now until I see that I'm looking over top of it, I'm manipulating it. All right, nice and clean. I'm gonna come forward with both of them. But I didn't put all my pressure on those first two. Just like when we do rubber legs, when you do the, the one set and then you do the figure eight and then I move forward. I do that before I crank on it. And that way it's set nice and tight right there. And you can see it's right over the top. Everybody's happy. And we can get these guys gone. So now I'm gonna clean that up just a little bit so I know where I'm at. Come back here. And now we're going to go into the hair. I'm not going to go crazy on talking about hair because we have done a lot of videos on selecting hair, but I can't help myself but just a, a little bit. We're going to talk just a little bit. And so <clears throat> what we're going to see, what we're looking for is a nice clean break. You should look at this. Even. Nice clean break up here. Remember, everything below the dark line is not hollow. And we're a nice clean break, especially on a Zuku, you want this this nice clean line up here in that kind of darker spot for nothing other than it looks good. I mean, it's, it, you want a nice, because these are supposed to be pectoral fins. They stick out the side. If you look at a sculpin, on a, on a sculpin that long, it's nothing for them to have pectoral fins half their body length. You know, they don't, they stay about that. It's almost like they grow before their bodies do. They can be that long. They still have these pectoral fins that are like that. And so, but on this particular fly, it's also going to have a purpose. It's going to have, it's a stabilizer. The bigger the pectoral or bigger the collar is, the more stable it's going to be because we're going to cut the bottom off completely flat. So we want a nice clean break here. We want about an inch to an inch and a half. And, and you know, you want to have the crinkle in the hair. And, but just an you know, inch to an inch and a half right here so we got good hair to spin. We don't have to go into that too deep. Uh-oh. What'd you do with my stack of Jeremy? Jeremy's fault. I did it. It's always Jeremy's fault. There it is. I just got back from a tying show. Oh, and I didn't undo all my stuff. So, we're going to take this, and unlike the, the hair that we used on the wing, this one we're going to clean. You're still, I still like to straighten my hair out. Just to, All you're doing when you start, when you do these things like this, where you start getting them the same length, all you're doing is not fighting it later. Every, it's a, little, a bunch of little steps instead of one big one and having to fight it to get it all the same length. So I cut those, so I brought it up to the edge, and then I'm gonna get it by the tips. I've got a lot of hair here. I'm gonna get it by the tips and I'm gonna open it up. And I'm gonna put it in there. You see how broad it is now? And all that does is it opens it up so when I clean it, it's not tr I don't have to hold on really tight. This is pretty dang good hair. It doesn't have a lot of the after the uh, 
fur in it. There's, you know, again, there's three types of hair. Fur, directional hair, guard hair. The guard hairs are the ones with the tips that I've got in my hand. And what this junk is, is crap, is fur and directional hair. You see there's no lines on the end of them. So we get that out of there. There's no such thing as over cleaning this hair. You cannot clean it too much unless you're not holding on to it tight enough and you lose it all. So that's nice and clean. I've got a lot of hair there. God hates a skinny collar. <coughs> so going to take that. We're going to look at it. Make sure that it's all nice and clean. Now, now is when you can really see how those tips, you got black, yellow, darker brown. It's just a really cool, when you look at a pectoral fin on a, on a sculpt and it's really modeled, it's a, you know, it's different colors. And that's why I really, that's why I like that color. Now a lot of this is aesthetics. You're just trying to build something, A, that's functional and B, that's, wow, I had a bad pull there. Bad pull. Wow, that's the first time I've ever made a mistake stacking hair in my life. Like, I've still yet to break my thread either. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Get a hold of that. For those who think I'm serious, uh, I'm not. So, nice and clean. We're going to take this stack. And by the way, I've mentioned this before. If you... I'm getting a little buildup and static on this one. Take a dryer sheet, stick it in, and it around. You don't want static in these. You don't care if you have static in your combs. It holds the stuff there. So I'm going to take this collar. It's all nice and clean. I'm going to just check for any crazy hairs. I'm going to come in here. I want this collar to be a third of the length of the body. So it's going to be nice and long because when we compress it, we're going to shorten it up. It's going to go off to the side. So I'm in here. I'm about a third of the body. And, it, uh, and I'm going to come in here, and if you, if you haven't seen my tutorials, there's, uh, I'm not going to talk about how to set this too much because I've got other videos about just setting collars. So, but to stop, you're not going to use these ends. We're going to come in here and make a nice clean cut so it's nice and clean. <clears throat> you hold it in your fingers so it's nice and tight on the bottom. We're not going to let this hair slide around. Is that it? You got me contorting like I'm not, I'm not in the circus. All right, so right there, we got a nice tight, and we're gonna hold the we're gonna hold the hook on the bottom of our thumb and our finger, nice and tight. It is, I mean, don't let the hair slide around the hook. Spin your head, your thread to the right. What that does, two things: tightens your thread up, but it's gonna allow the thread. It's gonna lay against my hand, so I don't fight it. So it's laying back, and I want to have about a sixteenth of an inch in here, and I want you to see how when I do this, I'm. Can you see the thread right now? Kind of pulling in. Okay, starting to blend in. See how it's starting to go away? And it's starting to build. I don't let go of my thumb and my forefinger. I'm not letting it wrap around the hook. I want it to go halfway and halfway only. And so as I pull, I get my second one as it disappears. Now I just pull right straight down. You don't need more turns. Do not. Every turn of thread has a purpose. And if you're one of these people that goes, wow, it's there, and you just start doing wraps, all you're doing is building bulk. You got two turns on here. You don't let go with your hand until you're done. Okay? Reach in there after you've got it. Push down. Make sure that everything, when you push down like this, you're trying to get it halfway around the hook. And that's why we held with our fingers on the bottom. We held it nice and tight so it didn't go all the way around the hook. And if you did it right, and also, this is also how you tie an elk hair caddis. If you notice, this is like the ultimate elk hair caddis right now. It's perfect. Every single one of those is the same length. Big O sunbeam. And if you did it right, if you did it right, it's, there's, no, there's no hair down here to trim. If you've got a few down there, just go in and go and take them off. But ideally, you want to see your entire body. That's why we put the body in. We don't want this hair to be all the way around. So you'll see it's, where you can see it's nice and halfway around. Now our pectorals are out to the side. They're, they're flared off to the side, so they're going to look like fins to the fish. And now you just hold, you, hold this in your hands so in case, it, you know, especially with GSP. It'll loosen up if you don't, if you let the, if you go like this, you can loosen that up. So now you've got two turns on here. Just make sure it's squeeze it nice and tight. 
and go right through them. One, two, three, four, go right to the middle. And I like to end up, I like to end up with uh, one, kind of screwed that up a little bit when I let go. When I let go and I said, if you do this, and I mean, see, it's not quite as clean as it was because when I did that, that thread loosened up. It's not enough to, you can't notice it, but it's just, it's be cognizant of the fact that that thread, especially with GSP, doesn't stretch like nylon. So you don't, it won't hold unless you go through it or through a half hitch. So on my flies, <clears throat> unlike some of the commercial flies where they really build up this, they really build their heads up and make them really packed tight. I like to get away with one rat, one spin if I can. Uh, if I have, if I don't get it com right exactly where I want it, I might do, a, I'll do a big one and a, a smaller one, but I'm gonna put one big spin right here because I like my heads to be a little looser. I don't, all I'm doing with this, with the hair, deer hair, I'm not trying to make it float, I'm not trying to make it sing, I'm trying to build a silhouette that is really light. And so the deer hair, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna cut most of it off, I want it simply to build that outside diameter, that, that the perimeter out there, it's just a silhouette to the fish. I don't need it to be really, really packed in there super tight. So now I'm going to take <clears throat> a pretty good size of this stuff, set it off to the side, cut it nice, nice and tight. Now I'm going to take this in, I cut it, I'm going to take it and clean it. Now this is even more important that you clean the junk out of here. And I took a really big piece of this this time. <clears throat> you clean that junk out of there because if you've got a bunch of that fur in the, in the hair, in this big uh, head spin we're going to do, if you've got a bunch of fur in there, it doesn't allow your thread to compress all the way around the hook. So what we're going to do, I like to cut the tips off there so it doesn't blend in so much into your collar so you can see it. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm, I'm just keeping this in a bundle. I want it nice and round. And much like when we did the, when we did the uh, collar, <clears throat> when we hold this, this one, when we held the collar, we held it right on, tight, on top, really tight, because we didn't want the hair to wrap around the hook. But with this one, you want just the opposite. You want it to wrap around the hook. You're going to start with a bundle of hair on top of the hook, and you're going to put one turn around it. And you're just going to hold, you're going to not really let go with your left hand, but you're going to let go enough so it, it starts on the top of the hook, this big bundle of stuff does, and it starts wiggling its way down until ideally you want the hook to be dead in the middle of this bundle of hair. You don't want it sitting on, sitting on top. So we're going to start here. <clears throat> we're going to come right in the middle of our, of our hook, and I'm going to take it, Still got a pretty good grip on my left hand, and I'm, I'm just starting to like, you see it wiggling around, and you can see, I'll turn, I think you can see that, and you can see as it starts to disappear, the thread, when the thread disappears into the hook, and you just kind of wiggle it, take your second one and go right through it again, and now you're letting it, now you can see when I hold it, it's halfway through. I don't know if you can see, it'll probably go out of focus, but it's halfway through the hook, and, and the hairs, now it's all the way around the hooks, what we're trying to do. We started on top, we're now we're going around the middle of it. Now we're gonna take one more, don't let go here, and that's our half turn. And so what we're gonna end up with is when I, when I pull on this, and it's gonna spin around the hook one time. It's not gonna go two and a half, it's not gonna go three, it's not gonna go half turn, because it's, this, it's gonna spin around the hook, that's why you're spinning it, and we're gonna end up, and the thread's gonna tighten down really tight around the hair, Hold your, hold your feather. So there's my full turn right there. And I'm pulling on, man, I pull, if I pull even, I, I'm gonna break my hair, okay? So that's, that's means it went, that means I had two and a half turns, it went one full rotation, I got one turn of thread around it. It's on the back side right now. So I'm pulling and nothing's happening. So just work your way through through your hair like that. Don't just go like this and pull it because you'll end up pulling the hair right there. It's because you're, out, you're right dead in the middle of it. Just work your way through it, nice and clean. Take a, a thumb and two finger grip like that, go over top of it and just look. Now, if you, I don't sit here and do this and pack my hair, but I want, I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I would finish my fly right here. I wouldn't put two on, but I just wanna show you something. I'm gonna push it back just slightly so you can see I got a little bit of, 
a little bit of gap. I, I don't have to do that. This fly is done right now. You do not have to put a second one on. But I just want to show you something. A lot of times, if, if you don't have enough, and now I'm going to take this little tiny bit of hair, right? And, and I didn't need to do this. Again, I reiterate that. If you can do it in one, do it. But I want to show you something about why they tell you to hold your, your hair off to a 45 degree angle when you tie this in. I'm even getting static -y. It's sticking to me. So if you're doing a second one, they always tell you, put it at a 45 degree angle so you, like there's some, but the re, like there's some purpose to the 45. That's not really what they're talking about when you, when you see these things. Did I mess up your focus? You good? Yeah. So the reason you put it at an angle is so that you, got, you take your middle finger and you can see what you're trying not to have happen. It isn't that there's some magic to coming in at a 45. What you're trying to do is so you can see it yourself with your hand and get this hair out of the way. You're trying not to come in and do that and grab all that hair. So what you're trying to do at this 45 is to get your hand in here so you can see it and you can get the hair and grab it without grabbing the hair that's already in place. See what I mean? It's like you, you don't want to catch this hair as part of it. So you get it at a 45 so you can see it. Come in here, do the same thing and do your wrap and just spin it on there. Now just now clean it up. Just get the hair out of the way. Come in here and do your whip finish. Cut it off. Okay. Now we've got, I kind of messed that thing up playing with it, so I'm not sure. <clears throat> so now, look everything over, make sure everything's still in place. Get your hair kind of fluffed out to the side there. Dig around for your double-edged razor blade. I had another, uh, this morning I had another email uh, about blade holders, uh, because I mentioned before I don't like them, I don't. I like to have them, I like to hold them in my hand. I just I, I have better control. I don't I don't like to be back here working way away. I like to be on top of it. You know, if you get used to a blade holder, you'll be fine with them. I mean it's not that they don't work, it's just that I've done it this way for you know 30, 40 years and I'm I'm pretty used to it. But I just I like being close to the fly. I like to be close and real control. I don't I don't really want to be way back here, kind of like I don't trim way back here with long scissors. I like to be right where I can see it. So the first one, you're always going to, marabou and hair, <clears throat> I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna hold it, see at the angle, I, and you know I talk about this all the time and I'll do a demo and people don't really understand what I'm saying when I, when I draw this. And drawing means it's a long angle cut. I don't come in, I've got it at a 45 degree, degree to the hair and I draw it like this. I don't push it straight, and I always, always control this blade with my hand, my right hand, in stabilized with my left. And I like to put it, you know, my hold my thumb against the vise somewhere, put this in the back of my hand right here. And it's not like you're pushing against it. It just keeps, just gives you a little bit of stability. Now we're going to come in here, and we're going to make just above the eye of the hook, and we're going to make a draw. See how I'm pulling this? I'm, I've got a long draw like that. That blade's kind of shut. So I'm, you get about, I've said this many times, you get, about six, you get about six cuts to a side before it starts getting dull. So nice and flat. I don't know where that looks best where you can see. Nice and flat, about right there, yep. right there. We got nice flat cut, and you should, if your blade's good and sharp, which this one's a little bit dull, one pull, you should be pretty good. Now just look it over, just, Pull this out a little bit to make sure it's not nothing's compacted. And now you're going to bend your blade just, and, and there's no way for me to explain this to you. It's not, look at it and say, okay, that's, it's not really tight. It's not flat. It's just, that's, this is the way I like them. It doesn't, you know, your style, I copied Ed Schenck 40 years ago, his style of head and, and a little bit Whitlock style. And that's just the way I like them. If you like them, you know, a little cleaner, tighter, that's, that's cool too. It's just, this is, you get to do what you want. So here I go in here, again, stabilize my hand, and I'm going to do this cut. It's going to start at this angle, and I'm going to come up and round it. It goes up and flat, up and flat. It's not up, up, and then mm, mm. it's one movement just like this. So we're going to come in, we're going to catch that hair, and come right into it. One, two. 
Okay, man, that blade is dull. I thought it was a brand new one. So they should have been do, able to do that in one cut, but that one's a little bit. Give me you. So I do all of them the same. I get my rough shape so that there we are. You can see it's pretty well to the shape that I want it. I'm not going to do much more to it. All right, and then I come in here and I grab. Don't grab it. I'm not ugh, squeezing it. I'm just manipulating it things out nice and loose. You got to get used to you know shaping these things your hand. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to come in two cuts. You don't do this in one cut. You just take your time right now and come from the back forward and then I just hit the tip of that, the edge, and I, I give it its round. So now you can see it's kind of got the round shape to it. There's really not much left to that. I got a little straggler right there. So, and then always, always, before you just race out to start cutting it, come underneath here and look, the reason I, I start on the top, I'm looking over the top of the fly like this. So I'm looking for center. And the center tells you something. I mean, if it's if you cut way short on this side, your fly is going to track. It's going to follow that, you know, just like that. You don't want it to go to the left. All right? You want this thing to be just like this, so nice and even. Boom, boom. And then look at the bottom. Just look at it. See if it's centered. If it's not centered, do as much as you can to do it on this first one because otherwise if you sit here and just keep messing with this you're gonna have a little tiny bullet head more and it doesn't grow back so here it is we're looking over the top of it come in here look for any stragglers that are maybe hiding in the bottom here everything's pretty clean I don't have to do anything on here you know there's one straggler right there just bugs me he's got to go so nice clean bottom you know, if you weren't chitter chatter and you do this, you'd have cut it and boom, boom, like that. You cut it out, you'd be done. Take you 10 seconds max to, to do a whole head. So that one's got everything's there. If you come into the bottom, get all that junk out of there so you can see it. All right, so when you look down over top, you can see that the body's nicely exposed. There's a nice, all, all your prey fish, everything that fish eat has a pearl belly, every single one of them. So when you look down, you got a nice pearl belly. You can see the tip of the flank feather is dead center. It's just past the tip of the tail. That's what you're looking for. You look over top of it, same thing. It's got nice, you can see the marabou's just under the tip of it. It's got a nice flat bottom. So when you, and it's got these big pectoral fins sticking out the side. So when you pull this thing, it's gonna flutter a little bit. It's not gonna flip upside down. And that's the real key to that flank feather while you do the flanks you do. So when you give this thing a pull, it'll do this, but it won't flip upside down on you. It won't track the feather. The feather, the shaft of that feather is going right dead down the center of the back of the hook. And this fly, this fish will, this fly will fish. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hunt it up. It's not going to go sideways. Not so much bulk in the head that it's never going to go underwater. And that's why I like my heads a little soft. You feel them, they're not, they're not really tight like a popper. You know, when you pack the hair, it makes it like a popper. We want it to absorb hair, absorb water, and give us a nice silhouette. Hope that helped you out.